Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and here's the headline from DailyHodl.com. Top Ripple executive says he owns Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, and this small cap cryptocurrency we are talking about, none other than David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO and co-creator of the XRP Ledger. And I actually uh, put together a, a number of tweets from David Schwartz on the topic of uh, you know, cryptos that he's owned, and uh, I thought it'd be fun to share it all in one spot here. But uh, before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap that like button, but, but don't smash it. Don't get all smashy smashy. Only dorks smash the like button. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It don't cost nothing, damn it. Take my free content. Uh, shout out to Frecky, who tagged me along with fellow XRP YouTuber a Jungle Inc. in this tweet. That's would be a good way to get the video going. And Frecky wrote the following. The more I see David Schwartz post about normal life, the more I get the feeling there is more build-out happening behind the scenes. Just a hunch. PolySign, XRP Ledger, Flare Network slash DeFi, an entire ecosystem. Oh yeah, well so, uh, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head there, and I'll, I'll say this. I think there's a ton going on behind the scenes that we're simply not privy to. And if you could just be a fly on the wall at the offices of Ripple, you'd hear nothing because everybody's working remotely. But if not for the pandemic, you would learn a lot if you were that fly on the wall. So, so we shall see here. And it's it's interesting because, you know, there hasn't been any real news about PolySign, which is really, it's just a institutional grade custody. Now, last, last time I saw David Schwartz talk about this, because he's one of the people that's uh, been getting this up and running here. It's his little project. Uh, just like the genuine excitement it was just it's just like palpable he's like oh my god i wish i could just share with you everything but non-disclosure agreement so i don't blame him one bit but uh but absolutely and um and then frecky also wrote this uh in response to his own tweet he wrote uh, just as an add-on david is simply not worried and i am not either regarding xrp and I can tell you, he has more than 99.9% more than 99.9% of people on crypto Twitter. Well, yeah, and so it's worth mentioning this as well. Uh, David Schwartz, um, he he wasn't gifted any sort of XRP, and it's it's kind of funny to think about it because he's one of the creators of XRP. But no, he did not get any free XRP. All of the XRP that he owns. Um, he actually bought on the open market, and he's been transparent to a degree that uh, certainly nobody should expect of him. But it's it's just kind of interesting to, um, to, to hear this from a creator of XRP itself here. But anyway, let's jump into this piece now. A Ripple's chief technology officer, David Schwartz, says he owns several crypto assets on top of his XRP holdings. Schwartz, one of the original architects of the XRP ledger, says... Bitcoin and XRP represent the majority of his crypto portfolio. In addition, he owns smaller amounts of Ethereum and basic attention token. I got a fun uh, David Schwartz Ethereum story. It comes, it comes straight from his mouth, too. It's just, just interesting. Uh, I've mentioned it on the channel uh, in, in, at least one other time, but it's been quite a while. But uh, um, you can see here's the tweet. I think I had it actually pulled up on the screen. Yeah, so here's where it all came from. There's a tweet from David Gockstein, member of the XRP community. Uh, who who asked, what's the worst crypto you went and got into? And David Schwartz responded, Rust Bits. I have no idea why I bought some. I should have Googled that. I am curious. Like, I have never heard of Rust Bits. Don't know what it is. But if David Schwartz is saying it's bad, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he is correct. And then uh, he got a, a response to that tweet from Jay Adele, who wrote, Sorry to ask you that, David. Do you own any crypto included XRP at the moment? I know you more, li more than likely won't answer this question, but he did answer. David Schwartz responded. Yes, I own XRP and Bitcoin as well as small amounts of BAT and ETH and very small amounts of few others. Now, basic attention token, by the way, so that's... I, look, I know what it is, I just I haven't used it. Maybe I should finally look into this because I, I'm using Brave Browser, right? And so my, my, my very limited understanding of it is that if you choose to view ads on Brave Browser, which just blocks them by default, then you get paid uh, in BAT tokens. I don't know exactly how it works. 
And so, it, and it's just like free bat tokens. And I guess you can cha- trade it. I like, I haven't even ch- checked to see where you could sell it if you wanted to, but apparently it's uh, on ex- listed on exchanges here. Well, it has to be because there's an open market rate right here, which I checked before recording the video, and it's worth 27 cents, 27.4 cents. And so XRP community member Corey Lyons responded to David Schwartz and wrote, why everyone doesn't have some bat is beyond me. I'm already up to almost 30 after three months of Brave. So at the current price, that would come out to annually <laughs> with his usage, uh, just some quick math, about $30 a year. But hey, it's a free $30. So I don't know. Is it worth it to get the $30 or would I would I rather just not have to see ads? And then again, maybe it's, uh, you know, given the decency and illiquidity of this particular asset, maybe it's worth way more in the future and it's going to end up being a lot more than $30. So I don't know. I would love to hear anybody that's using Brave Browser. Are you just using the browser like I am, or are you actually collecting that? I would love to hear. But anyway, uh, so basic attention token is a utility token for an open source decentralized blockchain-based digital advertising platform. Now, um, I, I do have some more to share with you from David Schwartz, and this is just genuinely interesting. Maybe I'll do this this one first. Yeah, let's do this one first. Um, so in the article, they mentioned this, which made, made me think about this. So. In the past, Ripple executives have been questioned about their willingness to publicize bullish outlooks about Bitcoin, but not about uh, about XRP. And I had thought about that before this was even brought up in crypto media. I actually had thought about it, and I just thought, well, there's a lot of heat around them and a lot of weird accusations. And so I, I, to me, I always thought, it's not that weird that for the most part they're being kind of hush-hush because you hear like, you know, Brad Garlinghouse even publicly state that he's long Bitcoin, you know, still is to this date. And so there's this thread here, and I don't want to read the whole thing, but to David Schwartz wrote, I currently hold around 5% of the Bitcoin that I once did. And somebody named Brat No Blockhaus wrote uh, in response to that, honest question, David, why is it that Ripple staff always back away from saying they are long XRP, but no problem saying they are long Bitcoin, which is the crux of the original discussion? And David Schwartz did respond to that to his credit. And again, he doesn't have to answer these questions. He just chooses to engage with the XRP community. And I always appreciate the degree to which he's forthright which, with everybody. But uh, he wrote, global regulatory uncertainty. It should be enough just to be thoroughly honest, but unfortunately it isn't. So it, it looks like they're, you know, it's, it's a little bit of strategery, if you will. And that's perfectly fine. That's always what I suspected it was. And then I got this tweet from David Schwartz. And this was uh, from May 20th, of, uh, May 20th of this year. So it wasn't that long ago anyway. And, uh, and take a look at this. Here's a story that David Schwartz shared publicly having to do with his ETH holdings and uh, selling a little bit sooner than would have been optimal. So it starts with this. There's a tweet from January 16th, 2018. And David Schwartz tweeted out the following. I hold some XRP that I bought on the open market over the years, as well as other similar assets. When I first chose to put money in, I agreed on a de-risking strategy with my wife, should we ever have too much at risk, which I've been following with some sadness. <laughs> and so that was retweeted on April 20th of 2019 by somebody named HL No, who wrote, here is a comment from David Schwartz himself uh, that he sold his stash during January 2018, which aligns perfectly with the wallet. To make it clear, I don't blame him. It's reasonable to cash out. He built it, so why shouldn't he profit? And David Schwartz responded to that. And this this is where it gets it gets pretty interesting. Check this out. This is still the case. This is David Schwartz talking. Still sticking to the de-risking strategy my wife and I agreed to when we agreed to put our own money into cryptos. What helped me not to be so sad selling during the bull run was thinking how happy I'd be if I regretted my decision, but it still hurt. The majority of our liquid assets is still XRP that I purchased on exchanges by market making. The majority of our illiquid assets is still Ripple stock. I'm going to have lots of skin in the game for the foreseeable future, whether I want to or not. And then he wrote, and check this out. This, this, is, this is where it gets even more interesting, in my opinion. He wrote this. And I, I, can, I feel the pain. He wrote, I sold all my Ethereum, $40,000 worth, to put solar panels on my house right before the start of the run that would have made that worth... $40 million or so. Ooh. 
<laughs> sold it for forty thousand dollars, which hey, that that actually does legitimately sound smart. Like I, I get where he's coming from. This is not some sort of critique. It's just it kind of shows the, the 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 craziness of the crypto asset class when you're talking about illiquid markets and then parabolic bull runs. So sold it for forty thousand. If he had held a little longer, it would have been forty million. Whoa, absolutely insane. And then he wrote, "I felt like an investment genius when I did it." Uh, pocketing a decent profit and ending all risk. Uh, that bothers me as much as any decision I've ever made because all I had to do was nothing and I broke my rule about trying to make decisions such that I'd be very happy if I regretted them. So there you go. And I'll say this, like, and I publicly say this too, like, none of us can time markets anyway. So at the end of the day, like if you decide to reduce your risk to any degree by selling any asset, whether it's crypto or stocks or you name it, uh, and if it ends up being worth substantially more, you just you just got to accept that before you know it. Because if you're going to have some cognitive dissonance as a result of that, it's just not worth it in my opinion. It's just like, no, just understand you're not going to sell the top. And even if it goes way, way, way up, as long as you're happy with your decision in the moment, that's all you can really require of yourself, right? That's all you should expect of yourself, in my humble opinion. But uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.